That's my step van back there. And today I want to give you seven, yes, that's right, seven tips on how to buy a step van. I bought my step van about two years ago and during that time, I have learned a lot about what I think is necessary and what you should look for when buying a step van, specifically for converting over to a living space, to an RV, camper, van life, whatever you want to call that. Point number one would be dealing with the criteria of the engine. Do you want to go with gas or diesel? That's one of the most frequently asked questions that I get, gas or diesel. My advice, in most cases, is going to be diesel. There are a few exceptions. So why do you want to get a diesel? That is the big question. Diesels are a little bit more complicated than a gas engine. This is a Cummins 5.9 6BT. That means it's a six-cylinder. You can see up here the six little cylinder heads, whatever. That's the top of the cylinders there. And all this massive sized equipment. This is the radiator on it and everything is oversized on this. So the question is, why a diesel over gas? Well, really that comes down to this is a larger vehicle and the diesel has a lot more power for hauling around a larger rig, which is why you see diesels being used in commercial use. And the gas is a little bit more efficient and speedier and thriftier and easier to care for for smaller vehicles. So if you're thinking big, larger vehicle, I would say get a diesel. The exception might be if you're planning on traveling to areas that don't really have great support for diesel and you want to have access to mechanics and to uh, fuel a little bit easier. For instance, if you're planning a trip from North America into South America, maybe in that instance a gas engine may be the way to go. But outside of that, I think in the United States, Canada, diesel is probably the way to go. The next thing I think you want to think about, point number two, tip number two, is going to be the exact engine and transmission you go with. And that, I would say, I'm a fan of the Cummins-Allison combination. That seems to be rock uh, solid for me. Um, you'll probably want to do your own re research on which one you go with. Uh, just the Cummins-Allison uh, is a classic combination. And this is particular one, the 6BT, the Cummins 5.9, is called the Million Mile Engine. And that's because if you take care of it, and if it's a light use engine, it's probably good for a million miles as long as you're maintaining it and properly caring for it. And I guess this is a good point to bring up point number three, which is light use versus heavy use. In commercial vehicles, they actually categorize the maintenance programs uh, for the vehicles in light use, or heavy use vehicles. So if you have a light use vehicle, let's say a step van, that would be like a plumber or electrician where they're just going out to maybe three or four appointments a day and then back to the shop. Versus picture a FedEx truck where it's going start and stop and start and stop. Turn off the engine, run into a store, run back out, start up the vehicle, uh, drive away and they're driving accelerating very quickly stopping very quickly it's just start and go constantly um, so that would be a heavy use type uh, situation and in that situation your lifespan of your engine transmission all the components is about half and the maintenance schedule is halved as well as far as when you need to do things like oil changes uh, transmission fluid, fuel filter, all of those components are going to be uh, much higher. So when you're looking for your vehicle, you want to be very careful about what the previous life of the vehicle was. If it's a FedEx vehicle, it's a UPS vehicle, that doesn't mean automatically that it's drooled out. It just means that when you're looking at the mileage on it, you need to be careful about that because the mileage on it is considered high use and the lifespan of the vehicle is probably about half of a vehicle if it were in the hands and the use of somebody else like an electrician, a plumber, or maybe a mechanic. My step van was owned by a diesel mechanic and it was used to service fleet vehicles, so this would have been a light use vehicle. The next thing to consider is the length of the vehicle. When you're looking at commercial step vans in the advertisements, it's going to be listed as a 14 foot or a 16 foot or an 18 foot. And you go out and look at it and you're like, well, this is not 14 feet. This is 22 feet. 
And that's because that measurement you're seeing advertised is the cargo space. That's the space from behind the driver where there's a cage all the way to the back doors. And then you've got to add in the cab and the bumpers and everything else. For instance, my step van is called an 18 foot step van and it's actually 26 feet long. So typically you take that measurement and you add about four feet and it depends on the make and model there. But I would highly recommend you look for a 22 foot long step van bumper to bumper because that fits into a standard parking space in Canada and the United States. And that's ideal for parking in cities, parking lots, anywhere. Mine is really too big to fit into one space. When it's advertised, you want to look for a 14 foot step van. That means the cargo space. So look for 14 foot step van in the advertisement, which should be 22 foot from bumper to bumper. Another thing you want to think about is your back end here. Do you want a roll up door or swing doors or some other configuration? I think that the roll up door is a big mistake. It's a big problem. But if it's a good deal and you don't mind removing it, that may be the way to go. Just realize that it causes all sorts of problems if you're trying to make this into a living space because when you roll up the door, it's going to be taking up that space in the ceiling in the back and you have to build this giant pocket around it. It's very, very, very hard to insulate. Uh, it's just really difficult to work with. Those that have step vans and have done this, they know and they've told me that, which is why I bought mine with rear doors like you see here. And there's two configurations on the rear doors, at least the most common ones. There's like I have that are just narrow doors that when you open them up, they're not going to go into traffic. And then there is a, I guess they'd call it a swing door or a, I'm not sure what they're called, but it's basically two of these narrow panels and they sort of scissor together. Um, so that you can open it up and I've seen a couple of those so if you can find those I consider that sort of golden or if you get a door that opens up the entire width uh, Or you can get two doors that are entire width I think that would be ideal for a house conversion or RV conversion in your step van Another tip I would have is to keep in mind your roof material. A lot of step vans are sold with fiberglass roofs in them, and that's so that you can have ambient uh, passive lighting in them during the day. The driver goes into the back and he's able to easily see to get a package and run outside. He doesn't have to flip lights on and off because the light from the sun just comes through the fiberglass. The downside for that is that fiberglass over time is more susceptible to breaking, developing cracks and leaks than aluminum. At least that's what I understand from people who have owned fiberglass um, roofs in the past. So they're just a little bit higher maintenance. I wouldn't say make it a deal breaker, but just be aware that if you have a choice A or B, you may want to consider just a solid aluminum or solid metal roof instead of the fiberglass roof. But those that have the fiberglass roof sort of like the passive lighting. And if you don't mind that extra maintenance, maybe that's the way to go. The last tip I have for you is where to look for step vans when you're doing your shopping. Uh, there's a few obvious ones. Number one, Craigslist. I would check out Craigslist in your local area. And I also would recommend looking for a Metacrawler, uh, which is a... It's a special website that allows you to search all of the areas of, say, North America for Craigslist instead of just the area around your house. Um, I'll put a link below to one of the meta crawlers for Craigslist that I used in the past, and that should uh, help you out to find all of the step ends nationwide on Craigslist. The second place to check out is Commercial Truck Trader. I would uh, go hop on there, take a look there. I think um, you'll find a lot of step vans that are being sold commercially from businesses. Just a side note as we're wrapping up where to look for step vans, you probably are going to end up traveling outside of your local area to get the step van of your choice because the chances of it being in your local area with all of these features that are uh, desirable is not very likely. Most likely you're going to have to travel to another state or travel across the country. I flew all the way out from Texas to New Jersey to look at a step van. Didn't buy that one. Flew from New Jersey all the way up to Washington State, the opposite side of the country where I did buy this step van. Then I drove it all the way back to Texas. So you need to be prepared for that. 
uh, at least if you want to be very picky and very specific in the step van that you purchase. Another place that you can look for step vans is on Facebook in their marketplace on there. Um, actually, there's a lot of step vans that are becoming available in there from private owners and some better deals than you'll see on the commercial truck trader. So definitely check out the Facebook marketplace. And the last place is to check for commercial auctions uh, in your area or nearby. There's a number of places where you can get commercial vehicles that are being put up for auction, and a lot of times you'll get really, really good deals there. You do need to be careful, take a mechanic with you when you go out and do your uh, inspections prior to the auction. So those are my seven tips that I have for buying a step van. I hope that you find them helpful. And I would encourage you to consider a step van as your vehicle that you convert over to become your tiny house, your RV, your camper, your living space. That's all I have for this episode. Thank you for watching. Savor the moment, and I'll see you next episode.